Hey Astra Kids and welcome back. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about Venus and Mercury shifting into the sign of Gemini. And we're going to cover a little bit of what this Mercury retrograde will look like to start with as well. And we will go into how this will affect you all individually according to your moon sign or your ascendant sign. So Mercury will shift into the sign of Gemini on May 26th and Venus will follow it on May 28th. And then on the 29th of May, we will have our last major planetary shift of Mercury stationing retrograde. So this is all happening within this time frame of May 26th through May 29th, and this will take us into the month of June. And so as these planets are shifting forward into the sign of Gemini, this is a very different energy compared to this Taurus energy that we've experienced here through most of May, which has been very relaxed. It has been very grounded. Taurus, remember, is about nourishment, comfort, our home, our security, what's familiar. When we come into the sign of Gemini, this becomes all about curiosity, communication, entrepreneurship. This is about putting yourself out into the world, having the curiosity, having the guts to take a risk and go for something in this world of technology, of the media, of communication, of relating to others, of putting your ideas, your thoughts out there, learning something new. So this energy of Gemini is very different from what we've experienced with these planets back in the sign of Taurus. Now, as Mercury comes forward into the sign of Gemini, it is coming into its home sign. So remember that Mercury is one of our planets that deals with connection. It is the planet of communication. And so it is all about connecting to others, getting your thoughts out there. And it is a planet that is heavily business related. So we talked a little bit about that when Mercury was back in the sign of Taurus, how that was a good position for business, for creativity, for expression, as Taurus is a very creative and sensual type of sign. We put Mercury in to the sign of Taurus. This gives very great business skills in terms of using those Venusian qualities of Taurus to make negotiations, to be hospitable, to put those creative talents forward. As Mercury comes into the sign of Gemini, this becomes even more true where Gemini is the master of how can we connect to one another, right? It is symbolized by the twins, which a lot of people think of as siblings, but actually The original symbolism of Gemini is twins as in twin flames, lovers. So Gemini is about the equal exchange between the masculine and the feminine. How do we give and receive within our interaction? So Gemini is the master at communication, this give and take, this ability to speak and listen. And so this is a huge factor as Mercury is shifting forward here into this sign of Gemini, which becomes all about the connection, the communication, getting your thoughts across, understanding how to relate and connect to people on this intellectual level. So here with Mercury in the sign of Gemini, This is a huge time of using your entrepreneurship skills, using your creative skills, using your mental abilities, your mental faculties to aim towards a goal, to get something done. Remember that that third house of the Zodiac, which originally belongs to Gemini, is the house of courage and entrepreneurship putting yourself out into the forefront, making yourself heard, taking that risk to make things happen in the world of business. So this is a huge time of communicating, of putting your ideas out there, of not being afraid to express 
express those thoughts and ideas out into the world and connecting to others through this energy. And we'll talk about how this affects you according to your actual zodiac sign as well as we go into this horoscope later. But Mercury is very happy here in the sign of Gemini. And remember that anytime that a planet is within its home sign, it is going to behave in a very calm and relaxed manner, right? It is at home. It feels comfortable here. And so we're not dealing with extreme energies. We are dealing with a very relaxed, very natural type of energy here when Mercury is in the sign of Gemini. Now we're also going to see Venus shift into Gemini as well. This is also a great placement. Venus is friends with Mercury, Mercury being the ruler of Gemini. So Venus is very happy in the sign of Gemini as well. Remember that Venus and Mercury are our two planets that are all about how do we connect? How do we relate to others? And so Venus is a little bit different. Venus is how can we be hospitable? How can we be polite? How can we be pleasing? How can we be understanding? How can we treat others with fairness, with kindness, with justice? And so Mercury is more concerned with the intellectual side of it. How do we communicate? How do we exchange ideas? How do we get the point across? How do we express our thoughts? How can we bounce different ideas off of one another? And how can we come into this place of even exchange of give and take. So Mercury is the basic foundation of communication. As we come into Venus, this becomes more about love, about diplomacy, about understanding, about compromise, right? Remember that Venus feels most comfortable in the sign of Libra. That is the Militricon sign of Venus. And Libra is the original ruler of that seventh house of partnership. This is all about how can we negotiate? How can we compromise? How can we come to a fair place of give and take? So once again, Mercury and Venus are those two planets of giving, of receiving, of relating, of going back and forth. Venus doing it more on terms of compromise, of understanding, of negotiation. It is about teamwork, fairness coming together. Mercury is more the intellectual. How can we exchange ideas? So we put these two energies together. And especially when it comes to the sign of Gemini, because Virgo is actually the Militricone sign for Mercury, as that is where Mercury is exalted, where it becomes all about problem solving, it becomes all about rational thinking and using the mind on the level of solving problems, mediating, coming to agreements and negotiation on those terms. Here in the sign of Gemini, this is purely about the curiosity, the ability to communicate, to learn, to express, to relate. So here, when we put the sign of Gemini with Venus, this becomes about relating for the sake of exchanging information, ideas, learning, communicating. So once again, this Gemini energy becomes all about entrepreneurship, curiosity, learning, gathering information, sharing information, right? The curiosity of Gemini is here and this mental agility of Gemini is here of this ability to bounce from one idea to the next, right? Gemini has this change ability, this adaptability to it, to bounce from one thought to the next. It's here and then it's somewhere else. And so this energy is very quick. It is very changeable. Again, very different from what we experience in the sign of Taurus, which is more relaxed. It is more hospitable. It's more polite. It is more musically inclined. Here, the energy is starting to speed up. It is starting to become more nervous, more active on the mental plane. So this is especially a great time for learning any new subject, for reaching out to others for different ideas, for sharing your own ideas, all of these things in terms of networking, doing things across social media, communication, relating, 
all of these areas can prosper. Anything involving writing, anything involving public speaking. Remember that Gemini sits opposite to Sagittarius, which is in that ninth house of publishing, of putting your larger thoughts and ideas out into the world. So this is a huge time of reaching out to a teacher, learning a new subject, publishing something, doing things across social media. All of these areas can flourish at this time through this sign of Gemini. Now, what we're going to talk about here is the Noxatras that Venus and Mercury will go through as they shift here through the sign of Gemini. So we have three Noxatras here in Gemini that we're going to discuss. And then we will go into this Mercury retrograde and we will talk about how that will affect us as well. So we're going to get a little bit into that. And before I go into all of this, I want to point out that a retrograde is not a scary thing. This is what most people think when they hear the term retrograde is that this is a terrifying thing where negative things are going to happen during this retrograde. This is not necessarily true. You have to understand how this is affecting your personal chart. This can affect people negatively depending on where this is in their chart, if this is affecting any of their personal planets, but this is not something where this retrograde is going to affect everyone on a negative way. A retrograde is actually not negative. A retrograde allows you to slow down and review things at a deeper level. So just wanted to point that out before we get into this horoscope over the Mercury retrograde. So starting off here, the first Noxatra that Venus and Mercury will shift into through their transit of Gemini will be the Mixtra Noxatra. So remember that the Mixtra Noxatra is symbolized by a deer searching through a forest alone. This is a very active energy of searching on a mental level. And so this is especially a time where you want to use these mental faculties of Venus and Mercury in the sign of Gemini to learn something new, to connect to others, to use your entrepreneurship skills with all of this searching, this changeability of this energy here of Mixra. Remember that this Noxatra is a Mars controlled Noxatra. So this is a huge time of using that energy to take yourself into multiple different directions. This allows you to multitask, to do things at a different level, to try something new with this energy that is changing, that's adapting, that is searching here in the forest. Now, the next Noxatra that this will shift into is the Arja Noxatra. Arja, remember, is the storm god. This is a Saturn-controlled Noxatra. So this is an Aquarius Noxatra, which is all about experimentation, trying something new. Again, we're here in the sign of Gemini, where this is all about curiosity. This is all about putting something new to the test. Communication, learning something new, putting your ideas out there gathering new information from other places. So this courage, this entrepreneurship of Gemini is here. And this is a great time of, again, learning something new, creating something new, taking a chance on something new, experimenting in your field of hobbies or careers, interests at this time. This is a great time of using your mental capabilities to do something new. Now, our next and last Noxatra that Venus and Mercury will shift through here in the sign of Gemini is the Parnavasu Noxatra, which is a Jupiter-ruled Noxatra. This is especially a great Noxatra for learning at a higher level. Anything that you are trying to master, anything that you're trying to learn at a higher level is going to prosper through this 
end of this transit here of Venus and Mercury in Gemini. What is the new talent? What is the new skill that you want to perfect that you want to learn at a new skill level? This is huge. And the other thing is that remember that this Noxatra of Parnavasu is symbolized by a bow and a quiver. It symbolizes the ability to bounce back from defeat. Because remember that when that bow and quiver is aimed in a direction and it fails, we can try again and then it happens to work in our favor the next time. So this is a very karmic Noxatra that deals with luck, that deals with fortune, especially as this is a Jupiter controlled Noxatra. So once again, this is all about bouncing back from defeat. Something that doesn't work the first time will work again if you try it over again. So that is a huge point of this Noxatra as well. Anything that you are trying, that you see that you're not being able to complete or master in this area that's not working in your favor, try it again, try it in a different way, and this will help you to continue to learn, to master, to perfect in this area of this Noxacher here with Venus and Mercury, especially being our two planets that are dealing with your skills, that are dealing with your talents. Remember that Mercury is your logic, your ability to communicate, to think, to put things together on a rational level. And Venus giving you the creativity, the skills, the talents. So these two energies together, very powerful. This is a huge time of trying something new, of building something new, creating something new in your life, using these two energies to move forward, to take a risk, to take a chance in terms of your hobbies, your dreams, what it is that you are trying to create. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this Mercury retrograde that is coming up here on the 29th as well. So Mercury will station retrograde on May 29th. And once again, a retrograde is not a time of doom, of an apocalypse, of something bad happening. You want to look at how is this Mercury retrograde affecting you? Because the Mercury retrograde could be the best time of your life. It could give you some great results depending on your chart. So again, I'm going to stress that that Retrograde is not something negative. How it affects you depends upon your chart. So whether you are going to experience some delays, some obstacles, that has solely to do with your personal chart. That is not a collective message of something that will affect everyone. Now, Mercury, interestingly, is going to retrograde within its own sign, which is very auspicious. When Mercury stations retrograde, what happens here is that Mercury is slowing down, giving us the ability to think at a deeper level, giving us the ability to take the time to look over the details, to review things at a deeper level. So remember that Mercury is a very quick moving planet. It's always changing. It's always moving. It's always adapting. Here, Mercury is slowing down and giving us the chance to really think things through at a deeper level. And again, this is why I say this is not a negative thing. And if you are a person who has Mercury retrograde in your natal chart, then that means that you have a great ability to think at a deeper level. So this is actually going to increase the intelligence. This is going to give you this ability to think slower and to digest information at a deeper level. Now, through this transit, Mercury in Gemini retrograde especially is giving us this great ability to slow things down, to look at a deeper level as Gemini is the original home to Mercury. So this is especially giving us this logic, this ability to process details and information, but that's slowing that energy of Gemini down. And remember that 
Mercury is in its Mula Tricone sign, its strongest sign in Virgo, where it is more practical, it's more resourceful, it is more tangible, it is more so able to calm down and process all of the information. In Gemini, this is very childlike. This is a youthful energy of this curiosity, this changeability, where it is in one place and then it's in the next place and then it's in another place. And so really through this retrograde, this gives this ability to really slow down that childlike energy of Gemini, giving us the ability to really process and digest information properly, right? And this is especially going to be helpful as we're coming off of this Mars and Gemini and Mercury and Aries with all those planets that have been in Aries since back in April, still finishing out this Mars and Gemini transit. So this is helping us with all of this impulsivity, all of this changeability, this quick energy that we have been going through previously as this is slowing things down here. And remember that along with this, we will have a Saturn retrograde, which is also slowing things down and a Pluto retrograde, which is allowing us to transform, to heal, to go in deeper, to face those areas of the unknown of those things that need to be healed and resolved. So there's a lot of energy now that is slowing down. That's coming to a halt. Along with that, we are here in an eclipse season as this Mercury retrograde is beginning as well. So if you have not checked out that video yet on the full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio, make sure to check that out. We are here in this transit now where we are caught in eclipse season and we are in retrograde season as well, where all of these planets are starting to station retrograde. So there's a lot of work, a lot of internal reflection, a lot of review that needs to take place throughout this period. Now, as we're sitting here in the summer months, where this is about going internal, reflecting, especially with that full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio, which has to do with our Rahu and Taurus K2 and Scorpio axis that we started back in 2020. Remember that K2 is the planet that takes us out of the material, out of the Maya, the illusion of this material world and shows us what is hidden beneath the mystical, the spiritual, the areas that need healing, that need growth, that need improvement. And it is at home in its sign of Scorpio, which also takes us deep into the hidden truths, into the areas that need healing and improvement. Remember that Scorpio is uncovering the things that are hidden deep beneath the surface. And so there's a lot of internal healing, a lot of things to face internally throughout this whole experience. And again, if you want to know more about that, I will leave a link above and down below in the description for this full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio. But there's a lot of internal work to do at this time versus doing things externally. So with this Mercury retrograde, this is especially a time to go in and review any sort of decisions, any sort of previous thoughts and ideas that you had, making sure that everything is positive, because this is especially a time where you can manifest things very quickly with this eclipse season on top of all of these retrogrades that are taking us in deeper. There's a lot of this energy now that's being revealed, that is being shown to us that can't be run from, that can't be something that you're hiding from, that is actually being revealed to us. So with all of this Scorpio energy in play, with all of this retrograde energy in play, there's a lot that you're able to manifest very quickly. So you want to pay attention to your thoughts. What are you thinking about? This can come into your awareness very quickly at this time, especially as this is a full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio. Scorpio is not hiding anything. Remember that Scorpio is the sign that is revealing the truth to us. It's revealing what's hidden to us. So this is a huge time where you want to be consciously aware of what are you thinking? What are you 
identifying with in your mind, all of these things coming into fruition with this Mercury retrograde. So that is huge. You want to pay close attention to your thoughts, your ideas, everything that you have thought about at this time. This is urging you to review those things to make sure that everything is in the proper order. And we do have one aspect that is related to this Mercury retrograde. Jupiter will be giving its fifth aspect over to this Mercury retrograde in Gemini. So remember that Jupiter is sitting there in the sign of Aquarius, where this is a moment of good fortune of things progressing forward with this position. Jupiter casting its fifth aspect over onto this Mercury retrograde is supporting us through this. As Jupiter is a beneficial planet, it is giving its fifth aspect where this is a huge time of using your higher guidance, using the knowledge that you have to work your way through this Mercury retrograde transit. Again, this is not a negative transit. This is one of deep contemplation of reviewing things, of going in and taking the time to think things over at a deeper level. Jupiter providing the wisdom, the higher insight. So this is a huge time where you are being supported through this retrograde. So let's go ahead and finish this off with your horoscopes. And once again, I want to remind you all that I am not using the tropical zodiac. So that tropical zodiac is typically used in Western astrology. It is based on the seasonal points and has to do with that zodiac that was discovered thousands of hundreds of years ago. We're not going to focus on that. We're focusing on the sidereal zodiac, which is based upon where the stars are positioned right now. So keep that in mind that those stars are actually moving. They are shifting counterclockwise along the sun's path, along the ecliptic. So that is very important. That is where we will focus on in these horoscopes. And also on these horoscopes, I'm focusing in on Jyotisha or Vedic astrology, which is based upon the scriptures. So this is going to be based upon your moon sign, not your sun sign, as we focus on the moon in Vedic astrology. That moon is a very important factor as it plays into all of your behaviors and patterns because the moon is connected to the mind, right? This is why we see a lot of times during different phases of the moon, animals will behave strangely or people will behave strangely because the moon is directly connected to the psyche. It is our state of mind, the way that we think and feel, the things that nurture us, our connection to our mother, to our home. The moon is actually the internal functioning of who we are. It is a very vital part of the personality that we must keep in mind in the horoscope. Along with that, I tend to focus on the ascendant as that is the point from which your soul made contact with this physical reality. So your ascendant is mapping out your whole physical journey throughout life. So those two points, the moon and the ascendant, they are the most important that I urge you all to look at in these horoscopes. Starting off for those of you with an Aries moon or Aries ascendant, this will be Mercury stationing retrograde in your third house. Along with that, Venus and Mercury are shifting into this third house here towards the end of May. So we have these two transits here of Venus and Mercury going through your third house. Great time for your entrepreneurship skills, your communication, Once again, those of you with an Aries moon, Aries ascendant, you have the natural horoscope. So everything is aligned just as it is in the universe there in your chart, where this is a great time for communication, for focusing on your skill sets and keeping in mind that Jupiter that's sitting in Aquarius, giving its support over from your 11th house. So any hopes and dreams, any things that you are 
hoping to achieve using your mental and creative abilities here with this Venus Mercury combo and Gemini there in your third house. For those of you with a Taurus moon or Taurus ascendant, this will be Mercury and Venus shifting into your second house with Mercury stationing retrograde there. You want to be careful of anything along the lines of your speech. There can be misunderstandings here with a Mercury retrograde in your second house. And with this, with Venus and Mercury in here, this does help in your speaking capabilities and being more polite and being more pleasing in the way that you are coming across in your communication. So you can grab a lot of people's attention through this. This is also a time where focusing in on your finances, on your responsibilities is huge as this is activating that second house. There may be some family concerns or some in your family who need your assistance with this focus here in on your second house. For those of you with a Gemini moon or Gemini ascendant, this will be Mercury and Venus shifting into your first house of self with Mercury stationing retrograde there. This is a huge time to focus in on yourself and you may be focusing in on your appearance with Venus there in the first house, thinking about ways of changing up your fashion, your style, your way of beautifying yourself at this time and with Mercury in there also thinking in terms of the details of how you can perfect yourself, how you can work and improve on upon yourself. With Mercury retrograde there especially, this gives you a deep insight into yourself, taking the time to look at yourself to see if there are any things that you are looking to change, that, that you are looking to do differently in terms of your choices and decisions. For those of you with a Cancer Moon or Cancer Ascendant, this will be Mercury and Venus shifting back into your 12th house with a Mercury retrograde there. This is a time of deep contemplation and reflection as this is happening in your 12th house of the subconscious. And so this is an area where you may discover some things that have been repressed there in the subconscious as Mercury is bringing a lot into your awareness, into your attention. And with Venus there, there can be a lot in terms of things that you need to work on, that you need to perfect. Venus being a huge indication of this as it is controlling your 11th house. So there are things in terms of your dreams, the things that you want to work on and improve. And for some of you, what do you want to work on in terms of your comfort zone? Are there things that you want to do differently within your home environment? This can be affected greatly. For those of you with a Leo moon or Leo ascendant, this will be Mercury and Venus shifting into your 11th house of your career gains, your hopes and dreams, your large social networks. And along with this, towards the end of May here, we will see Mercury station retrograde here in the 11th house as well. So this is a huge time of thinking and reconsidering, replanning, rescheduling, focusing in on your hopes, your dreams, your long-term goals, and making sure everything is in check there. As Mercury comes retrograde, this may be a period where you run into delays and obstacles in terms of your plans. This is definitely an area to revise and to review to make sure that everything is as it should be. This is also a time where you may get some news from a friend, from an elder with this activation of Mercury retrograde there in your 11th house. Moving forward here, for those of you with a Virgo moon, Virgo ascendant, this will be Mercury and Venus shifting into your 10th house of career with Mercury stationing retrograde there. This is a great time of putting yourself out into the world with Gemini controlling that 10th house of career 
This is huge in terms of your public image with Mercury and Venus there. This is great in terms of how you are coming across to the world, to others, in your business dealings, in your negotiations. This can be a great time to get that across. And especially as Jupiter sits back in your sixth house of your work and daily responsibilities, giving that lucky aspect over to this Mercury Venus combo. So this is a huge time of focusing in on your work, your responsibilities, and coming off in this very friendly and hospitable way with this Venus Mercury combination. Now, as Mercury shifts into its retrograde zone, this is going to be a huge time of going over any sort of business deals, paying attention to the fine print, making sure that everything is sorted out properly. For those of you with a Libra moon, Libra ascendant, this will be Mercury and Venus shifting into your ninth house of your higher education, of your belief systems, and of your luck and prosperity. So this is a huge time where this is great for learning anything new, starting a new class, looking into any sort of traveling or culture that you are looking to do in the future. Also, anything that you are looking to learn or experience on a new level, gaining some new insight and wisdom. So you may be looking into any sort of mentorship with a teacher, a counselor. This could also be a time where you come across some new insight while reading something. This could be a time where you're journaling and you're gathering some insight through this, especially when Mercury comes retrograde, you can gain some really deep insight through this transit. For those of you with a Scorpio moon, Scorpio ascendant, this will be Mercury and Venus shifting into your eighth house. Very intense as Mercury and Venus are both not so friendly to your ruler Mars. And so this is a time where this can trigger a lot of deep internal work and transformation that needs to take place. You can run into some obstacles, some delays, some frustrations through this transit as this is activating in your eighth house of crisis. We already have Mars in there as well. So you want to be careful here with this energy where you can run into some frustrations in terms of relationships, in terms of your goals, the things that you want to get done with Virgo controlling that 11th house. And so this is a time where you want to try to remain as calm as possible with this transit. As Mercury shifts into its retrograde, this can give you some deep insight into the changes that need to be made at a deeper level. For those of you with a Sagittarius moon, Sagittarius ascendant, Mercury and Venus will be shifting into your seventh house, Also very intense as these planets are not so friendly with your ruler Jupiter. And so this is a time where you can run into some communication issues in terms of how you're relating to other people with this energy and especially in terms of business and career, any sort of partnership or teamwork, there can be some issues that creep up in this area. So you want to pay close attention to these things, making sure that you're getting your point across as clearly as possible. And as Mercury comes retrograde, this will really help you to slow things down and to really see the areas where you need to change the way that you're communicating. Think about how to communicate differently, really going over and reviewing things thoroughly with this energy. For those of you with a Capricorn moon, Capricorn ascendant, this will be Mercury and Venus shifting into your sixth house. And this is very auspicious where this is going to help you in improving your work and your efforts. Both Venus and Mercury are great friends to your ruler Saturn and this sitting there in your sixth house of work and responsibilities. Remember that Mercury is not only your sixth house ruler with Gemini there, but Mercury is also your ninth house ruler, that ninth house of luck and great 
auspiciousness with Virgo controlling that ninth house as well. So this is huge where this can help you in prospering and revising things that have not worked. And this can help things to start moving forward in your work and career area. For those of you with an Aquarius moon, Aquarius ascendant, this will be Mercury and Venus shifting back into your fifth house, very auspicious zone. And of course, Mercury and Venus are both friends to your ruler Saturn. So this is a huge time of working on your skills, your talents, anything that you are trying to create at this time. Again, I'm going to bring this up that this time is a time of going inward, not of going outward. And so this is a great time of any sort of talent or skills that you have put on the back burner going in practicing and working on these areas this can help you to grow and improve during this time those of you with a pisces moon or pisces ascendant both mercury and venus are tricky planets for you this is going to be mercury and venus shifting into your fourth house you want to be careful with anything related to vehicles technology these things can malfunction during this time with this mercury retrograde that is coming in but with this start of this transit with mercury and venus this can be a time where you're thinking about buying something new that is luxury or comfort in your life. You want to be careful though. This is a time where you may want to hold off as that Mercury retrograde is going to come in the very next day that Venus shifts into this house. So again, you can run into some issues in terms of technology, in terms of vehicles. This is our typical Mercury retrograde scenario with this happening in your fourth house and Mercury being a very challenging and difficult sign for your ascendant. So this has been your horoscope for Mercury and Venus as they shift into the sign of Gemini together in this conjunction and following that with Mercury stationing retrograde here in the sign of Gemini as well. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like as well as a comment. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any new content. Remember that we are not done with this eclipse season. This full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio is just the beginning. We have three more eclipses to talk about, starting off of a solar eclipse in the sign of Taurus happening on June the 10th. So we have a lot to discuss here future wise, make sure you're hitting that notification bell so that you don't miss out on what is to come. If you would like to learn more on Vedic astrology, there is a course available in the Facebook group, Astrology Lessons with Daquan Jones. There's a link for that down below in the description along with the comments. If you have any additional questions, anything you'd like to add, anything you want me to talk about, I will bring it up in a future video. Just leave it down below in the comments. I want to thank you all so much for joining. I hope you all have a great day and I will see you in the next video.